All right, all right, Red Nation. Today we're gonna be talking about why physicists are still carrying around change in their pockets. It's not because they're addicted to the quarter slots, but rather they want a good way to figure out how your light field on your x-ray tube actually matches to the x-ray field itself, as well as how can you make sure that the iso ray of your x-ray tube is pointed perpendicular to your image receptor. Coming up here at How Radiology Works. That light field and that x-ray field, you want them to really be coincident with one another. You wouldn't want there to be a big difference. As a technologist, you're gonna be setting up the patient using that light field. Imagine this is the light field. So we're shining light down from the x-ray tube and this is the light field right here. Then we'll leave that light field on and we'll actually set up some coins. We can put these coins right at the boundary between where we see the light field and where we don't see the light field. So just establishing the ends of the boundary here. You can additionally place another marker to establish your orientation. Each of these coins is actually lined up again right at the edge of the light field. And we're checking each of the four sides. In the case of the well-aligned light field, you can see an image like this one where we have the four coins and they're each well positioned within our x-ray image. In the case of the misalignment, you can see that this coin at the bottom is actually cut off because the field was misaligned there. And then likewise, the coin at the top, we actually start to see some of both of the coins because there was a misalignment there. So in this case, we're gonna get the vendor in and we're gonna make sure that we can get this well aligned of the light field with respect to the x-rays themselves. The next concept we wanna talk about is the central alignment of that x-ray beam. So in addition to checking whether or not the light field is well aligned, we also wanna check if the tube, the central ray of the x-ray tube is landing right at the center of the detector and then it's perpendicular to the detector or the image receptor. One concept I want you to think about is if you have an image receptor here and you think about placing something on that image receptor, if we place a cylinder on the image receptor for instance and we think about a directional arrow coming off from there, the center point on our image detector, we'd like that to point straight to the x-ray tube as it's pointed in a different direction, then we say we do not have good central ray alignment. So how can we test that? We can think about placing a small plastic cylinder on top of our image receptor. In that small plastic cylinder, we have a couple of BBs, which will stop the x-rays. So you can see that in this scenario, as the x-rays are coming straight down from the tube, they're actually gonna pass through both of those BBs when we make an image they're actually gonna lie right on top of one another. Now our detector and our tube, we do not have good central ray alignment. You can see, if you think of a line from the x-ray tube through the top BB and a line from the x-ray tube through that bottom BB, they're actually gonna lie in different places on the detector. When we take images of this setup, you can see in the well-aligned scenario that the well-aligned scenario both of those BBs are gonna lie on top of one another. And in the case that there's not good alignment of that central ray, those BBs actually are not gonna lie on top of one another. So if we see two separate BBs, that's actually saying that we do not have good alignment of the central ray. Now that you understand how we can shape the beam in X-rays using the collimator, see our video on photoelectric and Compton interactions as to the basic physical principles of the way that those x-rays are interacting within the patient.